Hello everyone, I'm Asikos, and I'm about to teach you how to solve using factorization theorem. So, factorization theorem uh, is a theorem from long division. We were finding a factor of a to the n minus b to the n. So, according to long division, we are long dividing a to the n minus b to the n by a minus b. If a is the same as b, will make this polynomial to be zero. So whatever part you see here is what was supposed to be here in our long division, which is our remainder factor and this is our factor. In such a way that a to the n minus b to the n is given by this. As you can see in the equation, it's a to the n minus 1 where b to the 0. You know b to the 0 is 1, that's why we didn't write it. A to the n minus 2, b1, minus 3, b2, and t. Here we are using a to the 0, that's why you don't have a. So it's b to the n minus 1. So this theorem states, for every positive integer n greater or equal to 2, an element of the number. So this sign is for every. We are talking about every n. Our n is an integer, you know what is an integer? So there exists a b. We are talking about the existence. A b, a and b can either be it's any function or constant. So a to the power n minus b to the power n can express as follows. So we start for n is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2, we are using a squared minus b squared, which is the same as a minus b. a to the power 2 minus 1 is a. Then we come to a to the power 2 minus 2 is plus b. Note that all m n minus n we stop. So this is the one for n is equal to 2. So if we assume now that our a squared is given by x n, our b squared is given by y. This is going to imply that our x is just the square root of a n. Oh, I mean our a is the square root of x. Our a is the square root of x. And our b is the square root of y. So this implies we can be able to represent x minus y as the square root of x all squared minus the square root of y all squared. Well, we can write this as the square root of x minus the square root of y multiplied by the square root of x plus the square root of y. Hopefully you understand this one is clear. So now let me erase this not number of space here to do for n equals to 3. Then you understand. So, 
we can express x minus y as the two groups of x on q. We fix that to x minus the two groups of y on q. We bring that to y. So we can see that our x minus y can be written as the two groups of x minus the cube root of y which is multiplied by the cube root of x squared. Remember, in exponential law, whenever we are using something like a uh, let's say here is your n here is your a to the m I can always write this as the nth root of a all in the power n. So we take n inside. That's what happened. The cube root of this square, that, that's why a squared. This can be remember is 3 minus 1 there. So here is plus the cube root of x, y. So by having another situation here for this one, what you can see is the cube root of a multiplied by or oh, n root of a and n root of b. We can write as n root of both a b. As you can see, that's what happened here. So let's proceed. This is plus the cube root of y squared. So we can still express x minus y in the cube root. Last time we did for n square root, right? So let's proceed to do for n for root. So Whenever our n now is 4, realize that we follow a to the power 4 minus b to the power 4. This can be written as a minus b, a to the power 4 minus 1 is a cube, 4 minus 2, a squared b, 4 minus 3, a b squared, 4 minus 4 and 4, right? Is b cube. So, if you realize that this a to the power 4 and b to the power 4 is the difference of two squares, right? Which can be written as a squared minus b squared. a squared plus b squared. So we can also write this as a minus b, a plus b a squared plus b squared. Realize that this will take you back to this one. Which one you need? This part is the same as this part. You can also see we can, in this case, a plus b is a factor for this part. Then we can factorize this into this using a long division method. We multiply it takes us back here. But we just in the simple case where we use the difference of two squares. You know this is the same as a minus b and a plus b. So this is the one that we need to use for the form. So whenever we are using a to the power 4 being the same as x and b to the power 4 being the same as y, this will always give you a case that your a is the fourth root of x. And your b is the fourth root of y, right? So you can always express x minus y as fourth root of x all to the power 4, fourth root of y all to the power 4, which we can write following this one. If to the power 4, also it follows for the n equals to 4. Now our new a is the fourth root of x and our new b is the fourth root of y. Alright? So this is the fourth root of x minus the fourth root of y. Then we have the fourth root of x plus the fourth root of y. Then the a squared is the 
First root of x squared, which is just the square root of x. Plus b squared, the fourth root of y squared, which is just the square root of y. So we can represent this in the fourth degree. So what is our conclusion in all of this? Now we can conclude for it. Using this factorization here, we can express x minus y uh, in form of a square root, in form of a fourth root of a cube root, any empty root, as long as you know our n is greater or equal to 2, and also it's a element of integer. So let me give the conclusion explanation. Then we will have to solve a specific limit. You will get to understand what we're talking about. So we say, so we conclude that our x minus y can be written as x to the power half, which is the same as the square root, we square it, minus y to the power half, which is the same as x to the power of over 3, minus y to the power of over 3, which is the same as x to the power of over 4, minus y to the power of over 4. So, you can see x minus y can be expressed in the for this three. So, we can have x to the power of minus y to the power of x to the power of plus y to the power of. We can also have Remember, this is from n being 2. You can see. So you have your a in this case as your x to the power of, and you have your b in this case as your y to the power of. So here it's x to the power 1 over 3 minus y to the power 1 over 3. We can always write x to the power 2 over 3. Remember, changing from there to here is 2 over 3. You know what is happening? x, y to the power 1 over 3. Both of them, y to the power 2 over 3. So, in this case, your n is 3. Your a is x, 1 over 3. Your b is that y 1 over 3. Let's do the last one. x to the power 1 over 4 minus y to the power 1 over 4. x to the power 1 over 4 plus y to the power 1 over 4. x to the power of plus y to the power of. So you can see this is for n being equals to 4. Your a is x to the power 1 over 4, and your b is y to the power 1 over 4. So you see that a and b can be anything. When I mean anything, a color is a function. Or a constant. That's what I mean. So you get an idea. So let's uh, verify 